Hello, we're here to speak with you today about the US Fish and Wildlife Service's proposal to list the tricolored bat as endangered under the Endangered Species Act. The purpose of this presentation is to explain the service's decision process and proposal, describe the background and rationale, outline next steps, and clarify opportunities for stakeholders and partners to provide comments that the service will consider leading to our final determination on whether to list the tricolored bat. The tricolored bat's range includes much of the United States east of the Rocky Mountains, southern portions of four Canadian provinces from the Atlantic coast west to the Great Lakes, and portions of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, and Nicaragua near the Gulf of Mexico. Tricolored bats typically overwinter in caves, abandoned mines and tunnels, and in the southern portion of the range, road-associated culverts. The tricolored bat spends the remainder of the year in forested habitats, typically roosting among leaf clusters high in the trees. The tricolored bat forages at night and consumes a tremendous amount of insects. Since some of you might not be familiar with the timeline that resulted in this proposal to list the tricolored bat as endangered, we will share an overview. In 2016, the Fish and Wildlife Service was petitioned to list the tricolored bat. In 2017, we published a 90-day finding that listing may be warranted. In 2021, we completed a species status assessment, which informed the proposal to list the species as endangered. We published a proposal to list the tricolored bat as endangered on September 14, 2022. The 60-day public comment period is open now. We will review those comments and any new information and anticipate making a final listing determination in 2023. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the Fish and Wildlife Service completed a species status assessment in 2021 that informed our proposal to list the tricolored bat as endangered. As part of the species status assessment process, we, re we requested data from states, tribes, researchers, and federal partners. We considered the species needs and evaluated threats. Based on analysis of this information, we projected the species future abundance and distribution. Results of the species status assessment indicate that the primary threat influencing the decline of the tricolored bat is white nose syndrome, an infectious disease of bats caused by an exotic invasive fungus that thrives in cool, humid conditions and kills bats during winter hibernation and soon after spring emergence. White nose syndrome causes hibernating bats to become active when they should not be and prematurely expend their winter fat reserves. This disease is responsible for the deaths of millions of bats of multiple species in North America, which unfortunately means surviving bats are more vulnerable to other stressors, such as human disturbance and habitat loss. The threat of white nose syndrome is not new, but has been the foremost stressor on the tricolored bat for more than a decade and is the basis for our proposal to list the species as endangered. This map shows the tricolored bat range and the spread of white nose syndrome and the causative fungus since it was first observed in New York in 2006. The fungus and disease have spread each year, moving outward from eastern New York in all directions. The leading edge of spread now runs from West Texas and New Mexico, north along the eastern Rocky Mountains to Saskatchewan. The fungus is also spreading in Washington state since first being detected there in 2016. White nose syndrome, or the causative fungus, has spread to all states or provinces except one within the tricolored bat range, Florida. White nose syndrome, or the causative fungus, has not been detected in Mexico or Central America. The results of our assessment show that since the emergence of white nose syndrome, tricolored bat abundance and distribution have decreased significantly. Declines of 90 to 100% have been observed in white nose syndrome affected tricolored bat populations across 59% of the species range. Future projections indicate continued downward population trends across the range. By 2030, range-wide abundance is predicted to decline by 93% and spatial extent is projected to decline by 70% compared to historical conditions. Since the arrival of white nose syndrome, the Fish and Wildlife Service has taken a proactive approach in the conservation of impacted bat species. 
The service developed the White Nose Syndrome National Plan in 2011 to guide partners in managing the disease and works collaboratively with researchers and land managers to explore innovative solutions and approaches that address mortality concerns. Also, together with the U.S. Geological Survey and other partners, the Fish and Wildlife Service launched the North American Bat Monitoring Program, a multinational, multi-agency coordinated program that implements a monitoring framework to assess status and trends in bat populations allowing us to measure not only the impact of stressors like white nose syndrome, but also the effect of the actions we're taking to address those threats. The Fish and Wildlife Service leads the collaborative response to white nose syndrome in the United States and abroad, coordinating with over 150 partnering agencies, organizations, and institutions to implement the National Response Plan. The White Nose Syndrome National Plan provides a framework for coordinating and managing the investigation and response to White Nose Syndrome. Developed as a multi-species recovery plan, it outlines a strategy to address key research and management objectives and provides the framework for state, federal, and tribal coordination to address the threat of White Nose Syndrome to hibernating bats. We support research development and implementation of management strategies through annual grant programs including development of management strategies to reduce impacts of the disease with treatments aimed at slowing its spread and improving survival of bats. To date, the Fish and Wildlife Service has awarded more than 48 million to states, tribes, federal agencies, research institutions, and non-governmental organizations collaborating to advance our knowledge and tools available to help fight the disease. The fungus that causes white nose syndrome has invaded a large part of North America and is unlikely to go away. The fungus will continue to spread, affecting more bats and more bat species. Unfortunately, there is no single solution to treat or cure this disease, but the situation will require a multifaceted approach that incorporates diverse techniques to combat the fungus and help bats survive. The Fish and Wildlife Service and our partners are working on a suite of tools to meet a variety of management opportunities. These tools aim to reduce the amount of the fungus in bat roosts and on bats using sprays of natural or synthetic compounds or using specific wavelengths of light that are harmful to the fungus. Roost conditions can be changed or controlled to make it more difficult for the fungus to survive and grow or to make hibernation and healing less demanding for bats. We have supported researchers with the U.S. Geological Survey and partners to develop a vaccine that is being tested in the field to determine how well it can improve bats' abilities to survive and fight off infections. In addition to these direct treatments against white nose syndrome, we have also developed a variety of resources to help reduce other stressors associated with removing bats from buildings, maintaining bridges where bats roost, and managing forests. Because of their extremely low abundance due to white nose syndrome, tricolored bat populations that survive the disease are vulnerable to impacts from other threats. The threats assessed in the species status assessment included wind energy related mortality, habitat loss, and climate change. These stressors can have compounding impacts on the surviving bats, especially if they affect sensitive life stages. Wind energy related mortality of tricolored bats has been documented and is leading to detectable declines in tricolored bat abundance, even with ongoing declines from white nose syndrome. There are ongoing efforts to improve our understanding of bat interactions with wind turbines and explore strategies for reducing bat mortality at wind facilities. Temporary or permanent habitat loss may occur anywhere within the tricolored bats range, with impacts most often realized at the individual or colony level. Loss of hibernation sites or summer roosts can result in impacts to winter colonies or maternity colonies, respectively. Impacts from habitat loss will vary on the timing, location, and extent of the removal, but can be alleviated through the implementation of standard best management practices. Impacts from climate change may vary across the tricolored bat range in potential magnitude and intensity. Several climate change related factors may impact bats, including changes in hibernation conditions or timing and mortality from extreme drought, cold, or excessive rainfall. This complexity makes the impact of climate change difficult to characterize, but overall negative impacts are anticipated. The Fish and Wildlife Service will take a thoughtful and strategic approach with coordination around the listing proposal. 
Should the species be listed, there are tools available under the Endangered Species Act to allow projects compatible with conservation to move forward while providing regulatory predictability. We have many years of collective experience with other endangered bats and are able to leverage that experience with lessons learned and available tools, including conservation measures, best management practices, and other practical means that focus on surviving bat populations and protection of sensitive life stages. Under Section 7 of the Endangered Species Act, we consult with federal agencies to avoid, minimize, and mitigate adverse effects to listed species. Under Section 10 of the Endangered Species Act, we work with public and private groups and individuals to develop habitat conservation plans that provide project proponents with regulatory authorization, assurances, and predictability while providing long-term conservation for listed species. In addition, the Fish and Wildlife Service will identify ways to streamline consultations where possible. For example, the service is already coordinating with the U.S. Forest Service on a programmatic strategy for four bat species, including tricolored bat, that would streamline consultations on 34 national forests while also promoting long-term bat habitat management. Our immediate next steps following the proposed rule will be to take comments through a public comment period and virtual public information meeting and hearing. Based on a review of public comments and any new information, we will work to develop a conservation approach that focuses on surviving populations of tricolored bats, along with developing additional tools and guidance to assist partners and stakeholders. We anticipate making a final listing determination in 2023. There are multiple channels for providing comments on our proposal. The 60-day public comment period is open now and interested parties can submit comments through November 14, 2022. Comments can be submitted online at www.regulations.gov or by hard copy to Public Comments Processing, attention FWS-R5-ES-2021-0163, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, MS, PRB, forward slash 3W, to 5275 Leesburg Pike, Falls Church, Virginia, 22041-3803. The virtual public information meeting and hearing will be held on October 12, 2022, and is another opportunity for the public to ask questions and submit comments. If you have questions about the proposed rule, you may email us at ir1 underscore ESPENN at fws.gov. For questions about specific projects that may affect the tricolor bat, please contact your local U.S. Fish and Wildlife Ecological Services field office. For more information, including frequently asked questions and instructions on how to register for the public informational meeting and hearing, please go to www.fws.gov forward slash species forward slash tricolored dash bat dash perimyotis dash subflavus. Thank you for your time today and interest in the tricolored bat proposed rule.